Example 15, a man's journey with his dog. Okay, so here's a story. We're going to take that story and create a graph from the storyline. So first segment of motion, a man walks slowly out of his house with his dog for four seconds. So important information here, slowly tells us information about the speed. Four seconds tells us the time interval in which that speed occurs. Segment two, the dog stops to use the bathroom. So stops is going to give us information about the speed during that six second interval. Soon after, the dog sees a squirrel and sprints. So there's our descriptive word for speed. After it, the man sprints after the dog for the next two seconds. The man stops the dog and scolds him for two seconds. After getting strange looks from everyone, he realizes that he doesn't have a dog. So he starts to jog back home with his jump rope, and that takes him four seconds. Okay, so from this story, we're coming up with a position versus time graph. We have descriptive words that tell us about the speed of the object. Okay, in this case, speed is slow, meaning that our slope is going to be less steep here. Now we're moving in the positive direction. And that's going to occur for four seconds. So we're going to have a shallow slope for four seconds in the positive direction from the origin. Then the dog is going to stop. So that means that the slope, aka the velocity, is going to be zero there. And the slope is going to be zero for six additional seconds. So that's going to be until we reach a total of 10 seconds. So slope should be zero at 10 seconds. Soon after, the dog sees a squirrel and sprints. Sorry, hold on. I'm recording a video. I gotta figure out how to pause it. No. Okay, so our slope is going to be steep while we're sprinting. So we're gonna have a steep slope for two additional seconds. So that's gonna occur up until the 12 second mark. Okay, so we're gonna have a steep slope. Still in the positive direction, we're still moving away from the origin for two additional seconds. So that's gonna occur until the 12 second mark. Then we're gonna stop. So our velocity is gonna head back to zero. So our slope should be zero for two additional seconds, so that will be at the 14 second mark. And then he's going to jog back. So back means opposite direction. So we should have a moderately steep slope. It should be less steep than the sprinting segment, but a little bit more steep than the slowly walking segment. So moderate slope. And it should be in the negative direction because we're moving in the negative direction. We're going back home. So he's actually going back to the origin. So the final position is going to be equal to the initial position. So we're going to start and stop at the same place. So that means that our position graph is going to start at zero and end at a position of zero. Okay, and this is going to occur for four seconds, four additional seconds. So that means that our time interval is going to end at 18 seconds. Okay, so let's see what that looked like on our graph. So we're starting at the origin. Our origin is zero, zero. 
We're moving in the positive direction, so our slope is going to be on the less steep side, and that's going to occur for four seconds. From four to ten seconds, the dog is stopped, so we should have a slope of zero. Then the dog sees a squirrel, it's going to sprint in the positive direction with the steepest slope that we have. The dog's going to be scolded for two seconds, so the dog will say stationary at that same position marker for two seconds. And then we move from a position of 20 meters back to the origin, which we labeled as zero. Zero would be our origin. And that's going to occur over four additional seconds for a total of 18 seconds. OK. Our next story, a violent version of the bug's life, but we have an ant who slowly sneaks into the grasshopper's hut and finds his way to the central office in six seconds. So this word slowly, slowly sneaks. We have a less steep slope, so not too steep. And that's gonna occur from t equals zero to t equals six seconds. Okay, a giant grasshopper spots the ant and chases the ant out of the hut. The grasshopper continues to chase him out into the wilderness. So what that means is that, if you're to kind of picture this on a, on a timeline here, he's gonna move from his initial location through the hut. He'll see something and he's gonna move back through the entrance of the hut and then into the wilderness. So he's going to forego, he's going to pass the origin and continue out into the wilderness. So that means that if he's chased, he's moving pretty quickly. Okay, so speed gives us slope, so we should have a steeper slope here. But that slope is going to cross the origin. So that slope is going to cross the zero, zero marker. Okay, and this occurs over a total of four seconds. So that means that this is from t equals six to t equals 10 seconds. We'll have a less or a steeper slope and we're gonna start from a positive position and we're gonna move through zero into a negative position. The grasshopper catches the ant and leaves him buried in the ground forever. Okay, so unfortunately the ant passes away, meaning he stops moving. If he stops moving, the velocity will be zero, meaning that the slope is zero. And that's gonna occur forever. So for the rest of our time interval, which is gonna be according to our graph, it's from t equals 10 to 18 seconds. Okay, so on our graph, we'll start at a positive, or we'll start moving in the positive direction from our origin. That's going to occur for six seconds, and then the ant sees a grasshopper, he sprints, so we have a steep slope here. He sprints past the origin, so our position function is going to intersect the x-axis and move into the wilderness, which represents a negative displacement. Then the ant is caught and will remain stationary forever. Okay, so in that next space on your guided notes, you're going to make up your own story and attempt to graph that story. So your story needs at least three segments of motion. Notice how in our anecdotes here, we have something descriptive that describes the velocity or the speed to give us the steepness of the slope, so we can make an estimate, and also a time interval. Okay, so your time interval should also occur over 18 seconds. You wanna create a story in which the object has three to four different segments of motion that occur over an 18 second interval. So come up with your own story, graph out that motion, send it to me in an email, show me your story and your graph, 
Okay, pause the, when you're done with that interactive example, you can unpause the video and try the next example. Okay, last example, example 17. So the difference here is from a problem or a series of equations, we're gonna come up with a graph of motion. Okay, so instead of, instead of a description giving us our graph to translate, we're going to use a series of equations. So in example 17, Jim walked down 10 meters down the hallway from the cafeteria to the band room. Okay, so we're gonna assume here that this is a positive displacement. That is not a straight line, yikes. Okay, so we have a positive displacement. So we're starting at the origin. We always assume, unless we're told otherwise, that the origin is zero. So we're starting at a position of zero meters, moving down the hallway from the cafeteria to the band room. And that total distance, the final position here for Jim should be 10 meters. Cindy develops an interest in Jim and records his position every two seconds and notes that he moves 2.6 meters every two seconds. So yes, that's really creepy that he has done that, but we're thankful for Cindy because now we have a average speed for Jim throughout his journey. With this average speed, we can figure out information about where Jim will be and at what time. So before we take a look at A through C, we're gonna need to use the data that Cindy collected to calculate the average speed. In this case, because Jim's moving in one direction and that's the positive direction only, speed and velocity will be the same for this case because it's moving only in one direction. So we'll find the average speed. We'll take 2.6 meters and divide by two seconds. We get 1.3 meters per second. Okay, so now this is the average speed for Jim. We're asked to figure out what time Jim will reach the following positions. So in part A, if he's three meters from the cafeteria, which is three meters from the origin, okay, here would be five, three would be somewhere around here. So this is where he's three meters from the cafeteria. We wanna figure out what time that's gonna occur. To do that, we can take the average speed, thanks to Cindy. So 1.3 meters per second equals the distance he's traveled so far, which is only three meters. So it's gonna go in our numerator, divided by T to figure out what time interval that is. To get t by itself, we have to cross multiply. So I multiply both sides by t. t will cancel out on the right hand side. I have 1.3 meters per second times t is equal to three meters. Divide both sides of our equation by 1.3 meters per second. To get t by itself. We got 2.3 seconds. So he'll be three meters from the cafeteria when t is 2.3 seconds. Okay, what about three meters from the band room? Three meters from the band room would be at the position of seven total meters away from the origin. So same process here. We're gonna use the speed equation. Speed equals distance over time. So speed is 1.3 meters per second. Jim's distance from the origin is technically, technically gonna be seven meters and we're dividing that by T. Same algebraic manipulation here. To get t by itself, you multiply both sides by t. Divide both sides by 1.3 meters per second. To get t by itself,
and we got 5.4 seconds. Okay, so at 5.4 seconds, he'll be 7 meters away. He'll be 3 meters away at, th at 2.3 seconds. In part C, we're asked to, from this information, graph Jim's motion. So we can basically come up with coordinates for a position versus time graph using the information we just extracted. So we assume that the time of origin is zero seconds. So our first coordinate point would be zero, zero. So at time zero, we're at a displacement or distance. In this case, they're both the same, of zero meters. When we're at 2.3 seconds, we're located three meters away. So our next coordinate point would be 2.3 comma 3. Our next coordinate point, we know that when time is 5.4 seconds, he's located seven meters away. So that's our next coordinate point. We could even come up with a fourth coordinate point. Technically, if our distance is 10 meters and our speed is 1.3 seconds, that means it's gonna take 7.7 .7 total seconds to reach the band room. So our final time is 7.7, .7, which means that our last and final coordinate should be 7.7 .7, 10. We can plot that on an xy coordinate plane, where x is our position and y is our time. The slope of that line should be a constant 1.3 meters per second. Okay, so we're starting at origin. Our first point is 0, 0. Our second point, 2.3 at about 3 meters. That's point 2. We reach seven meters. At a time of about 5.4 seconds. And last but not least, we reach the band room 10 meters away at 7.7 .7 seconds. In okay, case so we can plot our points and draw our best fit line. The slope of this line should be the average speed which we calculated, thanks to Cindy, to be 1.3 meters per second.